Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. If then you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ. Father, we thank you for these words uh, and your word in total that you have given to us. We thank you for the incarnation, the perfect life, the death and resurrection of your son. Uh, we thank you for the gospel message that speaks of these things. God, this morning, I pray that our minds would be on these things that we have been given and I pray uh, that all the things that are distractions uh, the hopes that we have in this world that are empty God I pray that we would leave those things behind for things that have more promise and eternal value speak to us this morning through your word bless our time together it's in the name of Christ that I ask these things Amen. Well, it's great to see you guys this morning. If you would, go ahead and take out your Bibles and turn to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. While you're turning there, it was really nice worshiping with you this morning. And I'm thankful to God that we get to, and I'm thankful that we are free to do it. So if you are a veteran, or your family was, we are so thankful for them. Thankful for them serving our country and allowing us the freedoms we have this morning uh, to be able to worship God uh, together, freedom of persecution. So thank you. Colossians chapter 3. Scott Hubert said this. He said, set aside for a moment the day's pressing task. Hush the hopes and desires that rushed upon you the moment you awoke. Step away from the morning's burdens. Forget what the hours ahead may hold. Christian, remember, you are going to heaven. Very soon, even any moment, you will be hastened away from all you've known here to take an eternal holiday. You will wake up to find your lungs filled with the air of a better country. Your sorrows and sighs will be out of sight. You will see Jesus face to face, and with him, you will be home. I mean, that's powerful, isn't it? That one day we will take our last breath, and our lungs will be filled with the air of a better place, a place that we will call home for eternity. Because we are followers of Christ, that this is not our home. Our home is in heaven at the feet of Jesus magnifying his name for all eternity. So here we are in life, in this short little life, a life that James talks about in James 4 when he says this, Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. The reality is, church, that life is short and heaven is our home. It reminds me so much of one of my favorite quotes by Charles Spurgeon. He says this, Heaven is too wonderful. Hell is too horrible. Eternity is too long. And life is too short. So what are we to do with that? Seek the Lord. Seek and delight in the Lord. And so this morning, that's what we're going to talk about here in Colossians chapter 3. That we, in this short life, we are to seek the things that are above and to set our mind on the things that are above in this life. How do we do that, you may ask? How are we to prepare our hearts and our minds to seek the things that are above where Christ is and to set our minds on the things that are above? How do we do that? Well, I think first, the only way to do that is point number one in Colossians chapter 3, which is this. Life is too short 
So we need to live with true purpose in this life. Life is too short, so live with purpose. Listen to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2 again. If you then have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is. In the short little life we have, let go of the burdens, let go of all the things that try to distract you, and think for a moment that if you have been raised with Christ and your home is with him in eternity, what are you supposed to do with your life? Seek the things that are above where Christ is. Seek those things where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Verse 2, set your minds on the things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Like commit your life to focusing on laying up treasures in heaven, seeking the Lord, magnifying the Lord, uh, living with purpose, a purpose that glorifies God. I think so often if we were to define our life, we would say that most of the things that consume our life and our purpose and even our thoughts are worldly things. They're worldly things. They're worldly distractions. But we as believers, we have to live with purpose. We have to know that life is too short not to live for an eternal significance, not to live a life that truly matters. And I know you heard me preach on that with the Legacy Series, that one day our story will be that, nothing but a story, a legacy left. I don't want it to be defined as something that was distracted by the world, but no, no, something that was committed to making much of the name of Jesus, committed to laying treasures in heaven that bring him glory. So what does this mean, to live with this Eternity, eternal mindset. It means that God and eternal life with Him influences our goals and guides our actions. It influences our goals and guides our actions. Matthew 6, 19-21 says this, Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. And listen to this. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So I think the question we have to ask ourselves this morning, with we, we know the truth that life is short, and we know that we're supposed to live with purpose. We know that we're supposed to seek the things that are above and live uh, to set our minds on the things that are above. We know that. So where's your heart? Where's your treasure? What's your purpose in this life? Are we waking up every day distracted by this world? Worried about what lies ahead of us? Or do we wake up every morning reminding ourselves that we need to step away from the morning's burdens? Step away from them. Th throw those burdens at Jesus' feet and commit to magnifying his name every day. What's your story of your life? Are you laying up treasures in heaven by loving God and his word, by serving others and loving others for the glory of God? So point number one, in seeking the things that are above and setting your mind on things that are above, we have to know that life is too short. We must live with purpose. We must focus on what is truly important, and that is Christ. Point number two is this. I said point one was life is too short, live with purpose. Point number two, eternity is too long. So know whose you are. Eternity is too long. So take, step away from the morning's burdens and really think about eternity. Eternity is too long not to truly think about. To truly consider whose you are. Heaven is a wonderful place. Revelation 21, 3 through 7 says this. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. 
Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give them from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. If you are a follower of Christ, then your home is in heaven. Your home is with Jesus. A Jesus who loves you and has redeemed you. A Jesus who will wipe away every tear from your eye. A Jesus who says there will be no more death and no more mourning and no more crying and no more pain. The Jesus who says that you will be his son, his bride. That he will give you from the spring of living water without payment. Why? Because Jesus paid it for you. He paid it for you. A place where there's no more sin. Nothing but grace and love and forgiveness. And that's what you will consider and call home for the rest of your life. Do we believe that? Like it's hard to wrap our minds around eternity, right? So do we believe that? Do we believe that we are going to heaven? Because eternity is a long time. Not to know that you know. Well, heaven is wonderful. And listen to what verse 3 says of Colossians 3. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Don't you love that promise? when Christ appeared, you will be with him in glory. Not from anything that you've done, but because Jesus has redeemed you. Because you have repented and followed Jesus, and Jesus has redeemed you. And so yes, eternity is too long. Knows whose you are. Well, I said heaven is wonderful, and the reality is, if heaven is wonderful, we know that yes, hell is horrible horrible and this is not to scare you this is to paint just a, a real picture of what scripture says revelation 14 10 through 11 says this he also will drink the wine of god's wrath poured full strength into the cup of his anger and he will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day or night. These worshipers of the beast and its image and who receives the mark of its name. Do you listen how the word of God describes the torment with fire and sulfur? The smoke of torment goes up forever and ever, and there's no rest day or night. What about Matthew 25, 41? Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. While that is scary, the, real, the thing that sticks out to me is this. In Revelation, God says that he will give us rest with him. That he will, that we'll no longer thirst. That he'll wipe every tear from our eye. That sounds like a pretty awesome place. A place where we will be considered son and daughter of the Most High. And when you contrast the two, to know that you could be with Jesus for eternity and the worst thing would be then to be separated from him for eternity. It's something to consider. 
something to consider, especially when he says here in verse 4, when Christ, who is your life, appears for us who are followers of Christ, then you also will appear with him in glory. Let's, let's be very honest with ourselves and let's not let pride hold us back from anything. Let's know, are we a follower of Christ or not? And if we are, then this life is short and we need to live with purpose. If we are followers of Christ and in this short little life we have, we don't need to be wasting it. We need to be laying up treasures in heaven because that's where we're spending eternity. And so, yes, we seek the things that are above. And yes, we set our minds on things that are above because that's where we'll be for eternity. That's what we will call home because of Jesus. I think that this world tries to distract us and this short little life tries to distract us and we've got to take a breath this morning and we've got to throw those burdens to the side and we need to focus our life on what's really important and his name is Jesus. And glorifying him and being obedient to his word and loving people for the glory of God and telling people how wonderful he is. So where is your home? Is it here? Is it with Jesus? Or is it apart from Jesus? Because the real answer to that question is this will be nobody's home. Everybody's eternal home will either be with Jesus or separated from him. And eternity is too long not to consider where you're going. It's too long. And I love you too much not to ask you to consider. So point one, life is too short to live with purpose. Point two, eternity is too long. No if you're a child of God, whose you are. Point number three. God's love is too amazing. God's love is too amazing. So receive it with gratitude. If you're a believer this morning, you should be grateful. Grateful that your sins have been forgiven. Grateful that you have been redeemed, grateful that your sins have been cast away as far as the east is from the west, grateful that you have a home in heaven. If you are a believer this morning and you have been redeemed, the Holy Spirit is living inside of you, you should have gratitude. And if you're lost this morning, then God's love is way too amazing for you not to run to. Way too amazing. Listen to what God's word says in verse 5. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. And he explains those things that are earthly in us, right? E uh, sexual morality, impurity, passions, evil desires, covetousness, idolatry. It talks about these things. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. Verse 7, in these you too once walked when you were living in them. But now you must put them all away. Put them away. So you see what he says? Put to death and, and put away. And then in verse 9, put off the old self. Put all that away. And put on this. Put on the new self. Verse 10. What well, verse 12? Put on then as God's chosen ones. Holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. If one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. Verse 14, and above all these, put on love. So, so put off the anger, put off the old self, and put on the new self, a new self that is defined by God's chosen one. Put on love, put on Christ in your life. Receive his grace, be redeemed, and receive it with gratitude. Live for his glory. Verse 16 says this. 
And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, gratitude. Giving thanks to God the Father through him. If you're a believer this morning and you've put off this old self and you've put on this new self as God's chosen one, holy and beloved through Jesus, then we need to be thankful. We need to live in a way that glorifies God. We need to receive this new life we have. We need to receive God's love with gratitude. With gratitude. I hope this morning that you see the grace of Jesus. I think so often they hear people hear about hell and they think that G- God is some just mad God up in heaven looking to send people to hell. And that's not the truth. He is a good God. He is a faithful God. He is a loving God. And He wants to redeem you if you'll receive His amazing grace. If you'll receive His love. If you'll just receive it and be grateful for it. Be grateful. He's not up in heaven mad at you. He's up in heaven calling you home. He's calling you to him through Jesus. Through Jesus who gave his life so you could be redeemed. So receive it. God's love is too amazing. Receive it with gratitude. Receive it. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 15. Luke 15. Listen what the Word of God says in Luke chapter 15, starting with verse 11. Starting with verse 11. He said... There was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to the father, Father, give me the share of the property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. Younger son, right? Squandered everything. Began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. Is the son who has a really good father. And his father was providing for him and taking care of him. And the son grabbed his inheritance and left because he knew a better way. And he went and squandered it all in reckless living. And then he had to hire himself out. He was so hungry that he was longing to be fed with what the pigs were eating. In verse 17. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger. He came to the realization that his father was good. His father was good and gracious. He said, Man, my dad's hired servant have more than enough bread. And here I am, starving, hungry. So verse 18, I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. I think that's where many of us find ourselves. We don't feel worthy to come back to the father. We feel like we've sinned. We feel like we've ran. We feel like we've wasted some of our life. And this is what he said. I'm going to go back to the Father. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. 
Treat me as one of your hired servants. Verse 20, And he rose and came to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. And I think some of you think that the father is seeing you and he's looking at you mad and with anger. And listen to how Jesus responds and tell, or tells us how this father responded. So verse 20, And he arose and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. And what did his father do? Felt compassion. The father felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and before you I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Life is too short. Eternity is too long for you to not know of God's amazing love for you. You may have squandered everything. You may have sinned against God. You may be sinning against God. You may feel like you're failing the Father and you're ashamed to come back at Him. You think that He's mad at you up in heaven and reality is He's just looking for you to take a step toward Him so he can run to you and wrap his loving, gracious arms around you. Jesus loves you so much that he gave his life for you. Not to be a mad God up in heaven, but to be a loving God because that's who he is and to offer you forgiveness and redemption. Receive it. The worldly things that's distracting you amount to zero compared to eternity. So quit being distracted by those and think for a moment right now. Where's your home? Because eternity matters. Where's your home? Is it with Jesus? If not, if you don't know, run to him. Don't put it off. Run to him. And let him embrace you as his son or daughter. Where are you this morning, church? Life is too short. Eternity is too long. Hell is too horrible. Heaven is too great. And I'll add to that and say Jesus' love is too amazing. Receive it. Let's pray. Father God, eternity matters. So I pray this morning that we will hush anything that tries to distract us from considering where our home is. God, help us to put away any pride, anything that will hold us back from running to you. And help us to run to you and receive your love with gratitude so thankful for redemption so thankful for your grace and your mercy and God I pray for everyone in this room that they will see you God for who you are as a loving wonderful God as a gracious and merciful God and if they will look to you and they will bow at your feet and lay
let you wrap your loving, gracious arms around them, that they will let you put on them the best robe and the ring and to call you them sons and daughters, for you to call them sons and daughters. Father, I pray that people will come to you. Even if they are believers, I pray that they'll bow at your feet in gratitude for what you've done for them. And if they're lost, let them know this is a safe place where they can come to know you. Where they can receive your grace and receive your love. God, I pray that each and every one here will walk out of this room knowing 